Welcome to the Power Is Now Real Estate TV. My name is Eric Frazier. For those of you who have been watching already, we just started a conversation with Alvaro, Najera Montavon. Now I'm saying this whole name, folks, because I'm really just practicing. The reality is, is that uh, some names are more difficult than others, and I'm getting it down, Alvaro. I'm getting it down. And I got the first name right, so for sure. Uh, Najera and Montavon. Well, I may still need to work on that. Well. He's with us today to talk about the Riverside market and the surrounding areas. And he's a top agent, three years in the game, doing big things already. And I love real estate. Been at it myself of 42 years, folks. 41 years, actually, to be exact. And so I love this business and I love those who work in it. And I love helping people acquire real estate. It is the number one way, especially minorities, building wealth especially for minorities. I mean, there's ways to get in. Uh, and if you can hold on to it, wow, blessings. I'm telling you, it's just blessings upon blessings. The wealth, the equity that will grow over time will rain down like manna from heaven. You need to get into game, get into the game if you're in it, if you're not in it already. Well, Alvaro, thank you so much for your time today uh, to talk with us about the Riverside market. So far, you've given us a great background of who you are. So let's talk about now the market area you cover. Yeah, so I'll cover, you know, I've sold houses anywhere from uh, Barstow, California, which is pretty much the last city before you hit Las Vegas, all the way to Norwalk in Los Angeles County. But I specialize in the city of Riverside, uh, Riverside, California which is a unique little city. Um, and little is, is probably not the best way to describe it. It's about 300,000 in population, but its position is unique in that it's about an hour away from major attractions. So people can say it's an hour away from going into Palm Springs, uh, which is a desert attraction, an hour away uh, of getting into Big Bear, you know, snow attraction, an hour away into getting to LA, an hour away into getting into OC. So a lot of the appeal uh, when people are transitioning to Riverside is that fact is that it's just easily accessible from three different areas. So it's, it's a great city. It has three universities within the city and it's always bringing in new either students or technology or developments. So it's in kind of an innovation hub as well. And it continues to rapidly develop some personal insight that I have, at least from UCR is that, Plans are already built out for the university to develop more student housing in the flat land that they have um, right as you're entering the university with the intention of putting more students in. And that's going to go ahead and drive in uh, more housing needs because these students don't always stay at these uh, you know, student facilities. So uh, definitely that surrounding area is really, really big for rental income. So what I always say is that if you can get into the city of Riverside now as an investment, it's only going to continue to grow because the city itself has goals to continue to expand and grow and develop and innovate. So it's it's a phenomenal city to live in. Alvaro, as you know, um, the Power is Now Media, we're based in Riverside, folks. We're at downtown Riverside, actually. And uh, I've lived here in Riverside for the last 22 years, and I've seen just phenomenal growth. Uh, what resonates with me, though, uh, is the proximity that you're talking about to Los Angeles, right? So the Staples Center, the SoFi Stadium, uh, to Palm Desert and Palm Springs, great shopping out there. And then, the, the you know, the uh, heading to the mountains, you know, we forgot the snow, right? I mean, we're less than an hour for, from the snow and then heading to the beach area. We're less than an hour, about an hour from the beach. So you really get everything by living here, right? And I would say probably at you know the fact fraction of the price and the nuances that come with living in those areas, right? Palm Springs notoriously expensive. OC notoriously expensive. LA even worse. The mountains not as expensive, <laughs> but it's a nightmare to go up and down. So you know you have the opportunity to enjoy them, visit them and then go back to your little city, again, not so little, uh, at a fraction of the price. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, the affordability is here, folks, but it won't last long. Watch our home here in Riverside triple, no, quadruple in value since we bought it. 
20 years ago, quadruple, I'm talking four times what I paid for it. That's what it's worth today. Unbelievable return on an investment that I never really bought as an investment. It's my home. But again, one of the great benefits of home ownership, right, that it can serve multiple purposes over time if you hold on to the property. Some of the uh, unique uh, trends that you see in Riverside, you mentioned uh, that UCR is expanding student housing. Well, you're absolutely right that that's going to drive the need for housing because not everybody wants to stay in a in a in an apartment on student housing. They want to rent something or a bigger house or something, right? What else do you right. see? What are the trends do you know about here in Riverside? Well, if we're looking at the numbers, um, we're seeing prices continue to increase despite interest rates, uh, which is kind of a weird phenomenon, and it's. It's affecting interest rates because inflation continues to rise. It rose yesterday, so the market didn't like that. <laughs> and but the prices continue to rise, right? So it, it's really interesting from a buyer standpoint. And my strategy at this point is, you know, to sit down and strategize. How are we going to get you there? You know, both for buyers and sellers. How are we going to get you in a position to get the the highest return? Um, so you can transition to that next phase in your life or to that next property, perhaps. You're right. That's a conversation, an important conversation uh, to help buyers get prepared uh, to deal with the market that is in front of them. And, you know, you not only have UCR, a major university, expanding, but you also have downtown Riverside, right, which is continuing their revitalization efforts as well as um a lot of new construction has come in and most of the new construction projects in Riverside are close to being sold out or if not gone. And so more new construction is coming in, which is going to drive even more demand. So if we see that interest rates come down, that's really not going to help the affordability, is it? Because it's going to impact uh, prices because of the demand. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just classic economics, right? As prices come down, demand goes up. And that's going to go ahead and price and drop the price up, bring the price up. So it's really about strategizing. It's not going to get cheaper. And when I tell clients when they're trying to buy their first home, and I, I, I don't say it's easy. I say it's hard. I say it's, it's going to be the hardest thing that you will probably do ever in your life if you're doing this for the first time in your family. And it's an exclusive club. And the best feeling is when I hand them the keys and I say, welcome to the club. It, because it's exciting. It, you worked so hard to get there. You did it. And now you're going to get a return on it, finally. Because all those 10 years that you rented and you spent over $100,000 in rent, now you can get that back. And you have an asset that you can leave for generational wealth, leave to your children or pull from if there's an emergency or rent it out and create a cash flowing opportunity there and transition to something else. So the opportunities are endless. I have one example right now where I have a client who's liquidating their real estate portfolio because all of their family moved to Virginia and they're going to liquidate their portfolio to make that transition to Virginia. Should they, if they didn't have that portfolio, that transition would be a lot harder to purchase something, you know, potentially all cash out there with limited resources, no income, reaching retirement. It's a scary thought, but right. it's an easy transition for them. Wow. And what a great uh, position they're in to be able to ride this wave we've been on here in California, where we've seen double digit appreciation of real estate. And then to be able here nearing a retirement age to cash out and pay cash in the south or the east right i mean that is just that's how you do it right that's how you do it and congratulations on on finding a client that's uh working with you with a portfolio now did you find them or they found you no they always find me they always find me and it's funny it's it's the funniest ways that i get these types of clients because they start from the smallest transactions. It's never from a large transaction that I get a, an investor. Um, one of them was a recommendation from a piece of land that I sold for like $5,000. I made maybe $200 out of the sale. 
And wow. the client recommended me to their landlord. And the landlord said, hey, I have 10 properties. I'm liquidating them all. Uh, my tenant really spoke highly of you. I want to use you for those services. Wow. Wow. And then this it's other really one was uh, a call that I got for a condo of $150,000 that they were interested in. And again, let's go back to the beginning. No one wanted to take these calls. And I was the only one taking these calls. So it's just a transition to into this. And I think they were appreciative of the high level of service that I provided, despite what the purchase price was. You know, I just wanted them to reach their goal. And if they were confident and this is the direction they wanted to go in, I wanted to be that person to get them there. Wow. Well, congratulations again on your success and the clientele that you're building three years in the game, man. I am impressed. Let's transition and talk about the numbers here, right? So we just told folks, listen, if you don't, if you're thinking about buying a house and you're in Riverside, you better move quickly because the man here is crazy high. And uh, we are like the commercial center corridor of the world. All types of jobs are here. It centers Amazon. Is here. Everything is happening here. And so it would be unreasonable to think that property values are going anywhere but up. So let's talk about the numbers. What can you buy a home for here in Riverside? What's the average sales price? So I like, I like to look at the medium sales price for the city of Riverside. Okay. And these numbers are going to be for like your typical three bedroom, two bath, single family residence. So a house. Okay. We're looking at around $612,000. Now that has climbed uh, from the previous month in December from, I think it was like 598,000, 578,000. We do expect this because December typically is a slower month in real estate. What I like to say, it's the best month to buy. No right. one likes to move. No one likes to sell during this month, but it's the best opportunity there. There's not that many homes, but if you find one, jump on it. Because following that next month, you have a $30,000, $40,000 hike because everyone wants to buy a house now. And this trend is going to continue from January, probably all the way through June. And it's season correlated. It's very interesting right. that despite of what interest rates are, it follows a cyclical pattern. And it's a wave. It goes up and then it'll slowly start to trickle down. However, this wave keeps getting higher and higher every single year. <laughs> so it's uh You're it, it, right. it, yeah, yeah. When you say, you know, if you can get in, do it now. Absolutely do it at any point, whether it's towards the downward trend or towards the beginning trend, because eventually you're gonna climb along with everyone else. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I've been at this for a while and I've seen people walk away from deals that were, you know, you know, five to 10 grand for where they wanted to pay. And I know that if they haven't bought, then they are regretting that decision because they made that up probably six months into the house that they would have bought, it, you know, so the time truly to buy is now. Now, you spoke about inventory. Can you tell us? What is the state here? Because there's not very many homes for sale. And because of that, how long is it taking homes to sell in this market? Okay. So the data is a little bit delayed. When we look at the data for the MLS, you're looking at data from, we're in February, we're looking at data from January. And January is going to have a slower start. But if we're looking at current and active data, it's saying eight days on market for properties to sell. I feel like that number is even faster. We're looking at probably seven to five days on market right. if it's priced accordingly. Right. Um, the actual number that's reporting is 24, but I submit offers within five days and that thing has gone over asking and it's probably gonna close escrow with the next week, something like that. So, <laughs> and that's what I mean that you really wanna work with an agent with boots on the ground because you can look at the data and data could be wrong because it's delayed. Um, what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing is that things are selling relatively quickly. Um, things are selling relatively fast. And especially for those beautiful four bedroom, two bath, renovated, remodeled homes, those things are going to go even quicker. So what are the challenges in the market right now? If you were just kind of to outline the major challenges in the market and, and the opportunities uh, for buyers, what they what should they be looking at since prices are rising? Uh, how can it get in? 
Okay, absolutely. So these same struggles that we're feeling here in the city of Riverside, people are feeling in Los Angeles and Orange County. And rather than dealing with those struggles out there, they come to Riverside. And now they don't face those struggles, but the people in Riverside are now competing with the people in Los Angeles and OC who have Los Angeles and OC income, resources, and down payment. Right. So that is your biggest struggle is that the competition is coming from the outside in. The next uh, suggestion that I would give here is that it's no longer of trying to figure this out on your own. Obviously, you can look at Zillow. You can look at some data. You can look at Redfin and you can try to figure out comparables. But you really need to strategize and work with an agent that's boots on the ground to give us a strategic approach of how to get you into a property based off what you're looking for. You know, rather than set the expectation of I'm going to find you a home at five hundred thousand dollars in the city of Riverside when the median price point is six fifteen. Let's look at the days on market instead and look for properties that have been sitting a little bit longer around the price point so we can get you closer to the price that you want to pay. Now, if it's not the price you want to pay, let's figure out a strategy to see when we're going to go in and recover that money that we paid over asking over a span of three to five years. I promise you, you're not going to sell that house in five years. You're not. You say you are. You're not an investor. However, if you're an investor, let's find you something that we can strategize and get you out of in three years. Mm -hmm. Everyone doesn't want to overpay, but everyone isn't an investor. Only investors are considered about overpaying. If this is your family home and you're going to live there for 20 years, it doesn't matter if you paid 50. It doesn't matter if you paid 20 over asking you will make that money back, I promise you, because real estate always climbs. And if we look at it from an outside perspective, looking in, it's also uh, an investment that the government is looking into. And, you know, we've seen this thousands of times. The government doesn't fail. They always love to win and they're never going to lose. Even when you think they're going to fail, a bailout. <laughs> so, you know, the, the asset secured. Everyone goes back to 2008. Now, I wasn't a real estate agent in 2008, but I have observed it. I have studied it. And there are some vast differences between that market and this market. And the best way that I can summarize it is lesson learned between now yes. and then. And they're not going to repeat those same mistakes because companies lost millions and millions of dollars. Yes. Yes. And they don't want to do that again. You're absolutely right. And, and so the message to the first time home buyer is just get in where you fit in. And if you have to pay more, pay more, because you're not going to be selling a home in a year or two or three or four. I mean, there are circumstances, maybe a job move might require you to sell, but then you don't have to sell, just rent it out. I mean, real estate is something you buy and hold on to. But your investor, though, is a little different, right? Because they are buying to sell. What are some of the opportunities that exists for investors in this market right now? I feel like they're limited. They're limited. And you want to work with, if it's on market, it's not a good investment property. If you're looking for a flip, if you're looking for a cash flow opportunity, you need to get something that requires a little bit of work, a little bit of sweat equity. However, we do have several, several partners uh, that are on the wholesaling side where we can find you these opportunities for you where they're not necessarily on market, but we can get you a deal for those investor type of clients. So there's definitely an opportunity there, you know, if if that's something that they're looking for. Those have their own pitfalls. And, you know, but most of the time they're all cash, but, you know, investors are all cash. So that's not an obstacle for that. Alvaro, this has been a great interview. And uh, Matt, I am just so impressed with your knowledge and your analysis. And uh, I certainly hope those who are watching the show today will reach out to you uh, to get your expertise, to benefit from your expertise and knowledge, uh, and especially given three years in the game, man. Congratulations on where you are today. I can't imagine what you're going to have going on even over the next two or three years from now. So uh, let's uh, bring this to a close because I've learned a lot from you today. Let's talk about your, your, what is your recommendation? What are your recommendations to uh, buyers and, uh, and then your recommendation to sellers in terms of their overall strategy? Yeah, I would say uh, get together with an agent that is experienced that will help you strategize for either the buy or the sell of a property. 
because in this market, it's no longer about just putting up a sign and hoping that someone calls you. There's a lot of backend work that you want to go ahead and do so that it's an easy transition without any issues. And if there are issues, they're already accounted for. They're already resolved before it becomes an issue. On the buying side as well, you want to go ahead and strategize and figure out whether it's a credit situation that we have, a down payment situation, or an income situation. And how do we resolve that? So we're not trying to worry about this as we're trying to purchase the house. And in that same way, we're trying to get maximum value for your property. Let's go ahead and create a whole marketing campaign three months in advance for the sale of your property. Also, we're gonna have all those renovations and all those little touch-ups done prior to that point. So when we hit market, we hit the ground running and we get you that multiple offer situation and we get this property sold and we transition to something else. And we have an easy, smooth and nice escrow so that it's, it's a no headache situation. The best compliment that I've gotten out of my clients is that it looks like you almost didn't do anything. I said, perfect. I wanted to make it look like that. It was a nightmare of a storm behind me. <laughs> but in front of you, you would just sign something and you would get the result that you wanted. And I, I can think of one client where he goes like, like, I don't know how you do it every single time. Uh, I've tried this before. It's a nightmare. But somehow you get me the result that I was looking for. And I, I would say it wasn't easy, but easy is not what you care for. Right, right. You just right. want it done, right? He goes, that's it. I just want it done. <laughs> the pros always make it look easy. And um, that's what you are, a barrel of pro. Uh, I really appreciate your time with us today. If you could, for the sake of our podcast, those who are listening, uh, just provide your contact information and those who are watching us on television, you can see it's on screen now, but provide your contact information to reach out to you by telephone and or by email. Yeah, our, my telephone number is 66-869-2644. And the email address is alvaro at amrealtor.com. Alvaro spelled A-L-V-A-R-O at A as an Apple, and as a Nancy, and as a Mary, realtor.com. And then anybody looking for me on social media, it's a and Realtor. Uh, you can Google me, look for me on Instagram or YouTube. Everything's the same. There you have it, folks. Uh, that's a wrap on the Power Is Now Real Estate TV. Alvaro Najera Montavon talking about Riverside. Did a great job in uh, breaking it down and explaining everything that's going on here and why this is such a great place to live, a great place to buy, a great place to invest. It's happening right here in Riverside. Thank you, Alvaro, for your time today. Folks, reach out to him. If you're looking to buy or sell in Riverside, uh, he will not disappoint you. As you can see and or have heard on the podcast, he knows what he's doing. Well, thank you for watching the Powers Now Real Estate TV. Again, my name is Eric Frazier, President and CEO. If you have any questions at all about real estate, reach out to us. We are your resource. I can connect you with a real estate agent in all 50 states. I literally know agents in all 50 states. If you're looking to buy or sell, or you just want some advice from a seasoned pro, all you got to do is reach out to me. You can call me directly at 714-475-8629. Drop me an email to eric.frazier at thepowerisnow.com. Well, remember, we are at our best and we maximize our success when we act now. Thank you for watching The Power Is Now Real Estate TV. Please remember to download our TV app on your Android or iPhone and to subscribe to our YouTube channel, also our podcast, anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can find the Power Is Now podcast and the Power Is Now TV. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate Programming Guide magazines. Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. Thepowersnow.com. Thepowersnow.com.